Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm Greg. And today we're going to be making a piano out of pumpkins. Yeah, we're going to turn a laptop, hollowed of pumpkins and a makey makey and our musical fingertips into an electrical circuit. But to understand how this is going to work, first we need to know a little bit more about circuits. And for that, I need a light bulb. Have you ever wondered how a light bulb works? It seems pretty simple, doesn't it? All you need to do is flick a switch and the light comes on, press it again and it turns off. There's a light bulb inside this torch, but I've got another one just here. But to make this light bulb turn on, we're going to need a couple of things. And the first thing is electricity. Electricity is a type of energy that can be stored in one place or can flow from one thing to another. And the electricity that you find in a torch or in a laptop is stored in batteries. They're like little storage pods for energy. Electricity can flow from the battery to the light bulb. And when the electricity travels through the light bulb, it will turn on. But it can't just jump from the battery to the light bulb. No. The electricity needs to follow a path. And that path is usually made of these metal wires. All I need to do is connect the battery to the light bulb with one wire and then the light bulb back to the battery with another wire and we create a circuit. Now if I just connect this final wire here, look, there we go. The light bulb turns on. The electricity leaves the battery, travels along the wire path through the light bulb which turns it on and then it goes along this wire path back to the battery and it will keep on going round and round and round as long as there aren't any gaps and it's really important not to have any gaps in a circuit because as soon as you make a gap like this the light bulb will turn off because the electricity doesn't have anywhere to go it's a little bit like a train on train tracks the train will keep on running but if the tracks come to a stop then the train will come to a halt so as long as there are no gaps in our circuit the light bulb will stay lit but we don't always want our light bulb to be on do we sometimes we want to turn it off sometimes we need that gap and that is what a switch is I've added the switch to the circuits, and a switch is just a gap that you can control. And at the moment, the switch is open and it's creating a gap. And we know that because the light bulb is turned off. The electricity is coming to a halt. It has nowhere to go. However, if we close that gap and turn the switch, look what happens. The light bulb turns on. So now we know that the circuit is complete and the electricity is flowing through nicely. As long as there aren't any gaps in our circuit, then this light bulb will stay on. Something to add, uh, the whole path needs to be made of something that is conductive. Mm. Now that means that electricity flows through it. We know that metal wires are conductive. Electricity flows through metal really well. Electricity will also flow through us. <laughs> We're not made of metal. <laughs> it's because we have a lot of water in our cells and anything that has a lot of water inside it, like this pumpkin, should be conductive and electricity should be able to flow through it. I have a pumpkin and I have a plan. <laughs> Our pumpkin piano works in a very similar way to the light bulb circuit, but instead of lighting up a light bulb, we're going to use it to play a sound. Now, rather than the battery that Maddie was using, I'm going to use the battery inside my laptop and I've got the sounds already programmed in there. Now, I could just press a key and play a note like that. Whenever I press the key, that acts just like a switch. It closes a circuit underneath the keyboard and it plays the sound. I've also programmed it so when I press different keys on the keyboard, different circuits form and different notes play. But that's no fun. What I want to do is I want to extend the circuit outside of the laptop. To do that, I'm going to use this. This is called a Makey Makey. It's just a really simple and clever bit of kit to help you build a circuit. Plug that in. Okay. Now I'm going to connect a wire to my Makey Makey to the pumpkin. So now the electricity is coming out of the battery along the wire through the Makey Makey and onto the pumpkin, but it stops. There's a gap. Electricity can't make it all the way back to complete the circuit and play the sound. So I'm going to try to use me to complete the circuit. 
I'm now holding a wire connected to the Makey Makey, so hopefully the electricity will flow all the way through the Makey Makey, through the pumpkin, through me, back to the Makey Makey, complete that circuit and make a sound. Yes! So now what I need to do is plug in a lot of different pumpkins connected to different circuits, creating different sounds, and I'll make a pumpkin piano. six circuits using our Halloween pumpkins. Now it's important to remember that the Makey Makey has been designed by experts and we're following the instructions. Electricity can be dangerous so you don't want to try anything like this without an adult. Absolutely. Okay this is really exciting we haven't tried it yet. Okay so we're gonna play it by putting the lids, lids on. We're gonna have one hand on here that's gonna complete the circuit. Yep. Okay so get yourself ready. Okay three two one. It's working! That is so good! Now I've programmed this um, to play a piece of music. A Halloween spooky piece of music. It's a version of Greek's Hall of the Mountain King. Um, okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the lid? It's there, sorry, I hey, took the wrong it. lid! I took the wrong lid! We will get there in the end! Halloween spooky song played on pumpkin pianos, take 13. <sighs> Go. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, that's how you use pumpkins to build circuits. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed our Halloween themed video. Subscribe for more videos just like this, stay curious and we'll see you soon. Bye!